Thank you for joining us again. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Jordan Molnar. And you're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast live at UCC 2018. We are torched. Yeah. You're red as shit. I'm red as shit. It's been an incredible day today. It, it went from the forecast of just constant rain and misery yes. to I'm sunburned. Yeah. I mean, uh, a couple of uh, little showers that were like, what, two to five minutes? Oh, and most. then the sun came right out. My face is beet red. I'm looking at you and I'm like, damn, so I can only imagine what I look like. Oh, yeah. But we have a guest. We have a guest. Jordan. You have you were on the show last year at UCC. Yes, it was. Now, yeah. A little different point, dynamic. Though. I was going to say, at that point, you were here as a representative of Motor Ops. Now you are representing Blue Steel, which yep. is your your jam. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I was working for Motor Ops last year, ended up having some uh, family issues and had to take some time off and uh, went back home and started my own gig again there and kept rocking on from there and Decided to jump in with the big boys, and here we are at UCC 2018. So what kind of truck? What did you bring this year? I got a 2008 F350 with the 6.4 in it. Well, tell us a little bit about what's the setup like. Ah, so it's got a built motor. It's pretty much still a street truck. It's full interior. It's probably going to weigh around 7,400 pounds. Wow. And, uh, yeah, she's a heavy girl. So, <laughs> But I do a lot more sled pulling than I do drag racing, and... Uh, so I kind of went with the big chargers because she likes the top end. She likes to really scream. So here we are. So we didn't do too bad today. So it's interesting. We'll find out yeah, what we're going to do. You're in the qualifier bracket, uh, which means today you were on the dyno. So let's start off. How were the results? What'd you hit? Yeah. So today um, I was first time on a chassis dyno myself. So um, we came down with uh, a good baseline and we kind of worked up from there I started to learn the dyno how it was loading it up and everything else and we ended up putting down uh, 1079 on fuel only okay with uh, a set of uh, big compounds i was running a 472 and a 594 sxe borg warners just out of the box chargers Very with cool. dual k 16s and 175s i mean it's you clearly got a lot of air for the truck right so plenty of airflow coming 1079 just feels a little bit shorter than what i would have expected yes absolutely so we ended up having a little bit of an issue where we were pushing coolant. She ended up cracking a block on us there yesterday, so we decided to roll in here at 6 o'clock this morning with a different motor. But we still got things done. We are a little bit shy because the bigger cam would have really liked the bigger chargers, but we did what we could with what we have, so can't really be mad at that. So. I mean, you breezed right over a hell of a story here, Jordan. I saw you yesterday in the pits. Uh, you showed up for the mandatory driver's meeting at 4.30. Yes. We came from, so we drove from Peora right to here, did the mandatory driver's meeting, and then turned around, went back, finished putting the truck together. We slapped it on the dyno at 11.30 last night, and by the time we left Peora, it was one o'clock in the morning so just to clarify you came here to the mandatory driver's meeting yesterday with no truck and then drove four or five hours back to peoria to go get your truck dyno it to come back here to compete absolutely <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely yeah. you like, fool yeah. you fucking idiot what do you think <laughs> yeah it's exactly what we did like we could like i was like we're going it doesn't matter if the truck runs or not it's gonna go and it's gonna do what it does so I wasn't really sure how we are going to do a chassis dyno. I knew I was going to get out hunting horsepower by a lot of these bigger guys. Like, there's a lot more money invested and there's a lot more time and stuff like that. These big horsepower drag trucks, like, they got them dialed in and they're just bringing them over. Like, we're trying a whole new setup from what we ran last year to what we are today. So, I was like, I, but the thing is, I'm purpose built for sled pull. So, I do more sled pull, but my truck also weighs 7,400 pounds. So I got her balanced out pretty good. So, we see how she does. I mean, the qualifier bracket is a really different world this year than what the competitor bracket is. The competitor bracket's 99% drag racers, hardcore NHRDA, top, fastest trucks in the country. Uh, there's one or two sled pull guys out there, and that's about it, right? Yeah. But the qualifier bracket, there are a few more kind of sled pull driven trucks in the setup. Um, you're feeling like that's your strong suit, though, huh? Oh, absolutely. That's definitely what I was aiming for. Because I mean, he just sold me. You could over <laughs> you could over horsepower the track any day of the week. You can make sure that you're going to blow the tires off. You're going to end up overpowering the track. Like, there's all that kind of stuff that comes into play. It's like you got to make sure you ease into the sled, come onto her. Once you feel this weight come onto the truck, then you start mashing it. And just let her let her eat. Like that's what it does. So. I've, that's what I'm saying. I've done an awful lot more sled pulling than I have drag racing. So the truck's kind of more geared towards that. So that might kind of help me out because if a lot of these guys are drag racers, you got a 4,500 pound truck, you got to add another, say, 4,000 pounds back to it to make it up to a weight class. Well, my truck's kind of balanced out to where it is to fit into that whole category. So, right. okay. 
Okay, how do you feel about tomorrow then? Because tomorrow you're drag racing. Yeah, we're going to find out. We don't really have a whole <laughs> lot of safety requirements to run super fast in her, so we're going to find out tomorrow when she comes across the scales what she weighs and then what we can actually do with it. So we're kind of playing that ball back and forth, find out where we can actually run and still be legal for going down the track versus when we go to the sled pull, then there's it's, a little bit less yeah. rules and I have all the gearing to set up for that. So that's kind of like my strong suit. So I kind of lean towards that because there's no way I'm going to outrun a 4,500 pound truck on the top no. end. So what are you shooting for then tomorrow? What, what would be a good ET that you're like, okay, I'm happy with that number. I'd, I'd really be happy with a, like a mid to low 10 and that's I'm sure I'm sure all the qualifiers would be happy with <laughs> well, a mid to low time. The, the, the truck is still full weight, so like we end up pretty much adding weight to the truck. Like it has a passenger seat and a center console and everything to it. Like we pulled a couple leafs to try and cut our sixty foots down, but other than that, there's not a whole lot more that we really did to it. Like put some adjustable shocks on, kind of get her kind of squatting, but we haven't had a whole lot of testing tune on her, so we'll find out what she does. Man, I am excited to see this one run down the track tomorrow, Chris. I mean, I love his excitement. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan, you definitely got a lot of passion for this, and I got a feeling that that had to drive you towards getting into the qualifier. Obviously, the goal of the qualifier bracket is to become a competitor next year. Uh, how does that look for you? If you make the top five and, and you're invited as a competitor next year, what do you do? <laughs> Just keep growing is what we're going to do. Is like You can't really stop at this point. Like We fabricate our own compound kit in the shop at home. And a buddy of mine's an iron worker from in town, so he does structural welding. And I said, hey, man, we're going to build our own twin turbo kit. And he's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, no. So I just started ordering parts. And I told him, I was like, man, Grayson, you're going to have to start cutting this stuff here. And we're going to put it this way and doing this and that. And he's like, it's going to work. I'm like... It has no choice. We got too much money invested not to. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So, like that's what we're trying to kind of divert towards. Like we do some, like we do a lot of tuning and a lot of custom stuff like that at home already. So once we start getting into like more fabricating and stuff like that, that's where I really want to divert to because that way, I've spent the money. I've had customers spend the money to find out what actually works and what doesn't work. And I don't want to spend anybody else's money more than what I've had to do to right. get to where I am today. So if I can sell somebody a good product. And it works. Sure. And they're happy. Then it's a home run. that's the name of the game. Yeah, that's the dream. So can't get rich off pennies, but <laughs> you'll make it there one day. <laughs> or at least have the money to invest in your own truck. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <That's really good. laughs> uh, how has getting prepared for the UCC been? So I guess the last two weeks have been kind of a little stressful because we weren't really sure because it's been an entire new setup. So it was literally like nobody made a kit for our truck nobody makes a compound kit for a 6.4 so it's always a one-off kind of thing so i was like all right well i knew my setup last year worked really well it put down 900 on like stock bottom end stock motor and everything like that so why don't i just add on to that so then we kind of grew from there so i bought the bigger charger and started making our own piping and doing our fab work and stuff like that and then I obviously knew the bottom end wasn't going to take it this time. So we got a built motor from the, the boys over in Peoria at River City Diesel. And uh, they helped us a lot. Like, I've been dealing with those guys ever since the get-go. So um, they got their stuff down pat. So I deal with them really good. I have no problem complaints. So I said, hey, we're entering the qualifier. We're going to run what we're brung, and that's all it's got to do. So we kind of grew into that. And then uh, pretty much, like, it was like, all right, well, you need this. It's not the big dollars to get you. It's all the nickel and diamond that ends up killing you in the no, end. That, because that's a fact. Truth. It's all the, like, oh, it's like, all right, well, I got to buy a turbo blanket for a T6. And you're like, shit, that's 500 bucks. Like, <laughs> and, like and, and we're in Canada, so we got to pay the dollar on that yet, too. Yeah. So that's another dollar thirty-five. So, blah. but we're getting there. So it's, it's a lot of give and take, but it was more or less like, it's gotta work is what it came down to is like we can't put what we did into it for it to just come out and be a lump on every event so i knew what my strong suit was i need to come out and say hey this is where i'm good at the truck looks at home when we have the dually set up on her and the drag strip i've done a bit of drag racing here up over here on the quebec side stuff like that in canada and uh, it's a whole different atmosphere like we don't have the same rules and regulations that you guys do so 
that was another big jump. We have to make all the changes to make sure that we meet all your requirements for the racing and stuff like that. So once we got to that point, it's like, well, we have a truck that can pretty much do everything. So why still keep it a street truck? So we just kind of kept the interior in it and like, we're probably gonna kick you off the track tomorrow, but we'll see what we do. <laughs> so, just for the listeners as a reference, what's the best time that you've ran at the track? So far, so last year we ran 11:56 at 119.98 with a single charger on it, with a stock bottom end, and she down on 900 at the tire, and we were running literally stock wheels and tires like on the truck that came from the factory. No shit. So, I think it's like I've I've always been like, if I don't have to sell you poor quality parts. Why should I? Right. So, if you sell good quality stuff, your cap, your customers are happy, you're happy, everybody's happy at the end of the day, there's no complaints, if there's an issue, well, then you've got to resolve it and help make them right. do better where they are. So, How do you hope the UCC will impact your business, Blue Steel? I'm thinking we're going to come off with a total different perspective on what is kind of gear driven for towards the UCC because a UCC is a run with your brung all out kind of an event. So if you go walking around the pits right now, I might be the only truck with a full interior in it. Yeah. So I got full interior in it. I got 22 by 12 wheels on it with 35 inch mud tires, like, like Intercoat TSL boggers or what's on Are my truck. Are you racing with a different set of tires? Yeah, absolutely. Like I did my homework, so I knew what good tires I needed to run for the drag strip and I got, I got, I got a whole different setup for sled pulling. So I knew what I needed to do, so it's not that I'm trying to say I'm emphasizing on one perspective of what I'm good at. It's more or less like, yeah, sure, I drive a Ford, and I'm kind of more Ford-oriented for how chassis setup and stuff is like that, but like we still branch off into Cummins and Duramax like all the time. So I'm thinking once we kind of get into it, and they're going to be like, well, who's this guy that just came out and threw down almost 1,100 horse on fuel only with a truck? that is still drivable with a full interior versus a truck that's gutted, weighs 4,500 pounds, and it gets loaded on a trailer and goes home at the end of the day. Okay, okay, so you're hoping people kind of in your area will, will really see that this is, this is a potential for them. Exactly, so like if you have a truck that can do everything that you want during the week, and you can go out and have fun on the weekends, and throw down and scare guys that are driving Corvettes and Mustangs and stuff like that from light to light, then is that not the dream? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. How about beating the other Canadians here? We got Ryan Pfaff, Kelsey Opp, a few others out of uh, north of the border. You, you looking to kick any of their asses? Mm, Just try. rank a little bit higher? Yeah. It, it'd be nice. I, I, <laughs> I can't put my foot in my mouth, but they're, those guys, like I said, right? Lots of people are drag, drag racing yeah. oriented, right? So, sure, they're going to kill me on the dyno. Absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm bringing a knife to a gunfight for a dyno. Yeah, well, Faf, Faf put down 1,800. He's yeah. number two right now, yeah. right behind uh, T-Pain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, there's that uh, drag racing. We're probably going to kick it because we don't have enough safety. And then sled pull, that's kind of our strong suit. So, that's kind of what we're basing it on. Have you asked anybody if you get kicked off the track for not having the safety gear for the drag race? Does that time still count? No. <laughs> Breaking so, news here on Diesel Performance Podcast. So what our kind of plan is is like we're gonna we're gonna do everything legally, right? Like we're gonna go in, we're gonna tech in, we're gonna wear a truck and everything like that. But what is impressive about a truck that weighs forty five hundred pounds and clicks off say a nine or an eight or a seven? Sure, that's 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 awesome. Don't get me wrong. Like it one is, day yeah. I wanna be there. Absolutely. But what is more like kind of towards my customer base, I guess, it's like this truck can literally drive to an event, bolt 800 pounds of weight to the front bumper, sled pull, take the weight off and drive to the drag strip, and then click off, say, a low 10 or a high 10. That and is then, fucking and, cool. And then he can go drive, drive, drive to work every day. <laughs> so that, that's like the first diversifying is where I kind of say, okay, you can't have a truck that does one thing because once you get to that point, because... I even found with myself, I'm like, the minute I put a cage in my truck, I have a cage at home for it. I have a 10-point roll cage for it. But I'm like, the minute I put that cage in there, it takes away from the entirety of what my truck was set out to do. Right. It becomes a purpose-driven vehicle. Exactly. So if you can have something that can come out and, like, 
throw down really well in one select section. Like if you don't even have to be sled pull, you can be drag racing. You can do either one, but if you can do one better than the other, but because you want to do that one better, then I'm more happy with that. Like right. I have customers there now that are running like 700 horsepower plow trucks with a six speed manual and a Dodge. Like, like <laughs> the guys like I load 1500 pounds of salt in the back of my truck and I hit her in third gear and she blows the tires off. I'm like. That's cool, man, because <laughs> it's, it, it's his work truck. It has to go to work every day. It has to be reliable. It has to, it has to work. If you invest the money into something and it doesn't drive itself, then what's the point, right? Like, don't throw your money away. Well said. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, any other qualifiers you're keeping an eye out for? Who do you think is going to make a big splash today in the qualifier bracket <sighs> this weekend? I don't know. That T-Pain truck's pretty rowdy. So... Number one in the horsepower so far. I yeah. think it's going to wrap it. Yeah, unless unless this last qualifier beats it. Uh, they're looking at wrapping up 2,000 horsepower in the qualifier bracket. So the, the beauty about, like like you say, right, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So Well, that's a little truck, though. That's it, a little, little truck. But, <laughs> but he, he's, got a, he, he's got some stuff working against him. Like big horsepower also equals a little big risk for braking. Right. Unless you got the parts here to fix it the same day and you can be able to get her up and going, then right on, man. Like, I have no problem with that. Like, if I get my ass handed to me, that's awesome. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's, like, that truck and then there's a couple other trucks in the, in the crowd there. Like, yeah, absolutely. They beat me on the dyno. Absolutely. And then, like, they deserve that respect. So, but lots of these guys are more gear driven towards drag racing. So where I kind of feel like that I'm going to get my little edge on everybody would be in the sled pull. But to say there's a specific truck that's actually going to hand my ass to me, it's probably those Cummins guys with those bill aluminum blocks because that's worth more than my whole motor build. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, I guess that brings up another good point. Uh, you have a built 6.4. Six, six yep. Why? Why? Why wouldn't you start with a better power plant that's known for being more reliable or more competitive or easier to work on or like all the all the other things you hear about guys talking about with six fours why didn't you go with a cummins because that's too easy <laughs> it's got a point <laughs> right if everybody can do it then what's the strategy of being different about it yeah my <laughs> girlfriend hated the fact that i bought a ford at the time when i bought it and i was like i'm like this truck can make almost 600 horse at the tire with basic bolt-ons and i'm gonna make it into a pull truck and she's just blah 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 hating on me for buying a Ford because she's a GM driven girl so <laughs> I was like wow well, whatever you know what like we'll do something a little bit different but here's the other thing too people hate on six fours because a lot of these guys that are buying these trucks are buying them with a lot of mileage on them sure and they're hot rodding them up so you buy a truck with 200,000 miles and you put a tuner on 310 hot tune and you go melt pistons in it is that really the fault of the truck or is that driver error uh, well, a little bit of both. Well, here's the thing. My stock bottom end in my truck with 120,000 kilometers on it put down 900 horse, and I drove it home from Illinois to back to Canada to Ottawa, which is 14 hours. I washed the truck in the shop, grabbed a change of clothes because I was here for a week, drove three hours into Quebec, swapped the slicks on the parking lot, and I beat a fiberglass with a triple turbo Duramax with a 7-1 stroker from Stone Cal in it. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty impressive so, story, yeah. So, the big thing is, like, if you want these Fords to live and stuff like that, it's, it's no, not them anymore. It's, it's very simple. You do your maintenance. If it needs something, you fix it. Don't be cheap, because the minute you be cheap on anything, it's going to yep, turn it's gonna around biting your ass, yeah. and you're going to end up paying twice the money to fix the right the second time. So, you're going to be out the first bill, you're going to be out the second bill, and then you're still going to have something that's still hurt from being cheap the first time. Sure. So... Is it really that bad or is it neglect? Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you there. I mean, I guess I guess my question was more on the thought line of like dollar per horsepower. Dollar per horsepower, common rail's the way to go. Sure. Like, like you, you buy injector tips that are right? working, but I, I don't usually recommend that because if you buy injectors and you have an older truck and it has leaky injectors to begin with, and you pull better injector nozzles on the bottom of them, well, your flow rates are all out to whack. Yep. It starts flowing way too much fuel into them. Then you start getting hot cylinder pressures and then heat, sorry, and then you start melting stuff. And then that's when you really start to have problems. So 
it's kind of pick and choose your battle really so i like to do my homework on saying hey this thing is still fairly fresh it's going to take the abuse it's going to be able to live versus let's just throw parts at and hopefully it lives and oh then it grenades it's like oh wow it's a poor design of a motor well horsepower design the every every motor in the industry right now is all common rail yeah there's a reason it works exactly so i don't see why it would be like a poor power plant because sure like it has its faults but they can't copy somebody else's design because then it becomes a lawsuit and it does this and it does that right so i don't know like i've had it i've always kind of like liked those trucks because what was neat about them was whenever they first came out it was like nobody could touch them you put a programmer to tune them they would outrun anybody yeah yeah that was a A stock truck that was a tuner intake 600 horse capable truck exactly So that's what kind of drove me towards them at the time. And I've had my truck for five, six years now. And believe me, I told myself, I said, hey, I'm not going to do anything more than a programmer and a built trans. And <laughs> here we are now. <laughs> here we five are now. Years that's later, a qualifier. Yeah, no, the qualifier. Trying to keep up with the big boys and we'll see how we do. So we'll go from there. Well, that's awesome. Well, what a hell of a story. Thank you so much for joining us today. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Oh, man. I I really like to thank the boys over at River City Diesel. They've really helped me out the whole way. Uh, like there's I have nothing bad to say about those guys. They do they go out of the way. It's like my second family when I come down to the states whenever I come and see them, visit those guys. Um, my family for helping me out and supporting me and uh, let me take off milk and cows from <laughs> pulling wrenches and <laughs> leaving early for sled pulls and stuff like that. So, um other than that, everybody else is here to hear, like, sorry, here to help me today at UCC. Like, I got friends flying in from all over Canada and all over Ontario, pretty much everywhere, really, to come out and help me out. And everybody's more than, like, anxious to help, really. So I can't thank those guys enough. Just being there for me, for being at this kind of a caliber of event, like, is if this is the place to be, this is the place to be. So I can't, <laughs> I can't be mad at that. Any, any sort of help is welcome. I dig it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and taking some time out of uh, your UCC prep. This has been Paul Wilson and Chris Hemke and Jordan Molnar. Thanks for listening.